Thank you for your patience. Hello and welcome to this webinar by WebEngage. My name is Avantika Pandey. I am the community manager at WebEngage and the moderator for today's webinar. Before we get started, allow me to cover a few housekeeping topics. First, during the webinar, you'll be on the listen-only mode. Second, if you have any question, please type it in in the comment box below. We'll address as many of those as possible by the end of this presentation. Third, today's webinar is being recorded and we'll make the recording available on monk.webengage.com. Fourth, we would really appreciate your feedback on today's webinar. Please spare a few minutes to fill the survey, which we'll send out after this webinar. Now, for those who don't know, WebEngage is a marketing cloud for consumer businesses. More than 40,000 online businesses trust us to automate their retention marketing using multiple channels of engagement across email, web, and mobile. And the campaigns are not only targeted, but also personalized. When we started working on this webinar, we realized that spray and pray marketing is prevalent everywhere. And these were in form of bulk email and push notifications, which just followed like generic one message fits all approach. Now for your brand to stay relevant, it's highly imperative to personalize your engagement strategies across channels. And these numbers support the same. Today, Samit Singh, the product manager at WebEngage, will show you how you can level from level up from basic to hyper personalization for increased conversion and better top line and make it as easy as drag and drop with the help of WebEngage. Over to you, Samit. Okay. Thank you so much, Avantika. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Uh, we're getting record uh, attendance uh, today, which is very heartening to see because uh, the subject is uh, personalization. And uh, at WebEngage, we really believe that uh, personalization is the bedrock of uh, any modern marketing and product communication strategy, which is core to retention and eventually growth. So thank you all for your time. And I would just like to clarify that this webinar is going to be far less theoretical and uh, centered around the why of you should be doing personalization. We're assuming you all are already on the bandwagon. You all understand the importance and relevance of personalization in modern day marketing. Today's webinar is going to be focused around actionable things that you can take back and start using right away. We're going to be demonstrating most of the time. And so today is going to be how to rather than why to. Uh, if you're interested in uh, the conceptual implications of personalization and you still need convincing on why you should be doing personalization in the first place, we have done a webinar recently. It was done by, by a guest uh, host, Mr. Jim Poach. And uh, you can access that webinar and uh, actually much more on our YouTube channel. So, hi everyone. Uh, <laughs> some of you might actually recognize this uh, from uh, an email that you have received uh, yesterday. And uh, to begin with, we'd just like to give you like a tip on what not to do. So whenever you try to do personalization on the basis of data that you're collecting, always make sure that you're falling back to a default or a scenario, or at least think about the scenario where that data, if it is missing, uh, how would your message look in that case and provide defaults if applicable. So with that message out of the way, and uh, with uh, that context set that this webinar is basically gonna be a how-to, let's quickly run through the agenda. So we're going to begin with a quick rationale on why personalization is a necessity for marketers. Uh, we're going to go over the basics of how you can personalize your cross-channel campaigns using WebEngage. So simple personalization, uh, which, uh, which fall back or which rely on user attributes like first name, gender, location, and so on. We'll also uh, tell you about how you can make your campaign content so much more contextual using users' behavioral data as well. So the actions that they're performing in your applications, adding things to cart, searching for something, uh, clicking on a button, uh, abandoning uh, a purchase and so on. Any behavior that they express which is of interest to your business and which is actionable uh, can be picked up and used for personalization uh, of all campaigns across uh, WebEngage. 
the basics are the way we'd be going through advanced personalization where we'd be actually telling you how you can personalize on the basis of data that WebEngage doesn't even have stored. Uh, so if there's data that falls or that resides on your CRM or recommendation engine or any third party data store, how would you uh, in real time connect to that data store, fetch data and use it in, uh, in any cross channel campaign will also be demonstrated. We would also run you through uh, how you can create complicated uh, conditional data blocks. So um, if a certain condition is true, only then include this block of data something like that. Uh, we'll also show you how you can uh, use lists of items and uh, loop over the data and print them in your uh, engagements that go out. We'll run you through a case study, a real world case study that we did with, with a client, uh, which got tremendous results. So we'll actually uh, prove uh, what we are preaching today and we'll throw open the, the floor for question and answers. So um, just to keep the the, lecture or the theory as minimal as possible i would just like to address one uh, one topic here personalization is actually a very broad term so from an end user's perspective who's receiving your communication who's receiving the campaigns that you create it's actually quite simple all that they expect is that if a brand is reaching out to them the communication be contextual the communication be well timed so it should be non-intrusive and the data that you put in or the messaging that you put in is, should be relevant and should resonate with the people that you're trying to reach out to. So human-centered and humanized communication is the only expectation that your consumers have. From a marketer's perspective, this might actually end up translating into a gamut of things. This means that your campaigns need to be segmented, which means that they're going out to the right subset of people. It could also mean that the campaigns need to be triggered, which means that they don't always be blasts they instead go out at the right time or the opportune moment. And it could also mean that the content of the campaign itself is individualized. And the content is per, uh, per consumer uh, personalized. And the focus of this webinar is on this last bit, individualization or personalization in the context of the campaign content itself. All right, so we'll get to it. So our personalization engine uh, is basically channel agnostic. So WebEngage, as you know, is uh, a multi-channel marketing automation suite and you've got uh, emails, mobile push, browser push, in-app messages and SMS as channels that you can engage with your users on. But the underlying personalization engine is built in a way that it does not care uh, which channel the message is being sent on. The same capabilities and the same uh, plethora of uh, personalization variables are available to you across all of these channels. So you can personalize anything from the email subject to the body, uh, to the button labels, to the call to action links, anything which is textual or which can be uh, depicted textually like the image URLs can be personalized regardless of the channel. So they say that personalization is about humanizing your campaigns, right? So it's only logical that to personalize your campaigns in WebEngage, you basically look for the human. So this icon is your lead into the gamut of point and click personalization abilities that you get in WebEngage. Remember, to personalize in WebEngage, you look for the human. Okay, so let's go over a few examples. Uh, let's say we are an online travel agency and we are designing a campaign to recover abandoned searches. So if we were to draw out this on a whiteboard, we would say uh, when the user searches a flight, uh, we basically wait for them to book it or complete the transaction for up to 30 minutes. And if that doesn't happen, if it's an abandoned search, we basically try to recover or retain that lead by uh, sending them a subtle nudge. Now, let's say in our scenario, the nudge is going to be over a push notification. Now, if you were doing such a uh, campaign today without any personalization, um, you can only get so far as a generic message like this. You're booking away. It's click here to continue your, your transaction or your booking. Now, I would, I would give it to you that this is still personalized to some extent. This is contextual. This is in the mindset of a customer who's abandoned the search. So this will still resonate with them. But the messaging, the content itself is still generic. So let's try to incrementally improve that. 
for starters, uh, how about we just say uh, hi John or hi first name, mind you with the default. Click here to continue your booking. Uh, let's just go for this for starters. So let's switch over to the demo mode now and I'll run you through how you can achieve this. Okay, so this is the same uh, the same scenario that we are trying to basically personalize for. Let's say we're sending a push notification. Let's go into the composition of the push message itself. And you'll notice that right now it stands at the generic message that we saw. Just give it a moment. Okay, so your flight awaits. Click here to continue your booking. Let's just for starters try and make it a tad bit more personal. So let's say we want to personalize the title. Come over here. The instinct here is that I want to use the user's first name in order to try and grab his attention up front. So what I want to do here is that in the title field, I want to say hi first name or hi John in case of a sample user. So following my instinct, I would say, okay, hi. And now here I want to use some data, which I probably already have. Now, the way that you would get to that is by, remember what I told you, looking for the human. So you would find the human at most places where you would anticipate needing him. Click on the human and you'll find a couple of options and I'll go over these. You'll see three buckets. The first one is uh, user data, any profile data that you might have captured. And the other two are behavioral data that may have been captured any actions or events that the users may have done. Now, if the question that comes to your mind is how this data is captured in the first place or how this data comes about in WebEngage, well, that's a subject that we covered extensively in a previous webinar, Marketing Cloud Integration 101. Uh, you should probably look at that. But just to give you a gist, uh, there are three ways that data can flow into WebEngage. One is by integrating our SDK into your live platform. So our SDK sits in your app, it sits in your uh, in your website. So JavaScript, Android, and iOS are covered. And basically, this data transfer, this handshake is in real time. As in when a user logs on or creates a session, that session data is sent to WebEngage and possibly further enriched by you using CRM integrations, which could be in the form of uh, backend uh, webhooks or API-driven integrations or even batch uploads if required. So assuming that the data has come in, it is accessible to you in this personalization menu. The lead in is the human, remember. You could go into the first bucket, user, and you would basically see all the user attributes we have ever collected or you have ever passed to us. So this is a list that is made available to you in a platter upfront. So all I want right now is the user's first name. So all I do is I point, I click, and the result, as you see on the right, is I personalize. So I'm looking at the preview for a sample user. This would basically mean that whichever user this message goes out to, their first name is going to be substituted. With. And uh, just to not make the mistake that we did, uh, when we invited you into this webinar, you would always want to fall back to a default, right? So in case the user's first name is not found, let's say you would say, okay, I want to say hi there, just to make it uh, agnostic of whether or not the data actually exists in your database or not. So taking that out of the way for now. Once again, just to recap, I would go into the human, I would uh, take help from the human, I would go into the user profile bucket and I'll see a plethora of user attributes available to me. I would pick the one which is of interest and my voila, my message is personalized, right? So let's say we want to say, hi, John, your flight awaits, da da da. If I move on to the message, I see that the human is available here as well to help me out. Let me just leave this be for now. Uh, let's say I just want to make this a little more attractive visually. So I'll probably put in a generic uh, flight image if I could. Because we want to do better, but let's just start uh, with the basics here. So hi, John, your flight awaits. And a slightly visual message just to try and grab attention. So that's... That's how far we could get uh, with a simple user profile driven uh, personalization uh, effort. 
Uh, mind you, uh, this personalization token is available uh, at a lot of other places, as I as I told you. So it could be used in deep links. It could be used at la as labels of call to actions, and so on and so forth. So anything which is textual or which can be represented textually can be personalized using the Hume. Okay. All right. So this message is fine. It's good for a start, but it can obviously be a little more contextual, right? So we're sending it when somebody abandons their uh, their bookie, which means there is a certain amount of behavior that we've captured. They were trying to look for a flight. They were trying to book something. And that action did not translate into the result that we wanted. But what the user left behind, what the, what the imprint that he left behind could still be actionable to us because we could use the data that the user left behind for us to further personalize this message in order to improve our chances of emotionally connecting with the with the user and sort of nudging him to an action that that resonates with him. So how about we now attempt to do something like this? We've done this. Now let's try and get to a stage where we do something like this. John, uh, only three tickets are left for your flight from so on to so forth, and the departure is so uh, so and so date. So as much context as possible, which would resonate and maybe create a sense of urgency um, and firstly grab attention and try to evoke action. Let's try and fit all of that in. So let's try and get to that now. Okay. So instead of hi, John, what we are going to go for is, okay, John. Let's say we want to say only three tickets left, right? Okay, so only dash tickets left. Now again, I have run into a scenario where I want to use some data, which I possibly already have captured. So the data that I want this time is behavioral data, which is basically the search that the guy had done, that the user had done. I want to pick up some context from there. So there are two options here where you can uh, sort of go to, to get that data, event and uh, journey or life cycle related events. Both of these are basically uh, actions that the user has taken. If you go into this uh, sub option, into this bucket, you'll see a list of all possible events which are available to you and selecting something from here will basically mean you are interested in the latest occurrence of the event that the user has done. Whereas selecting an event from this particular bucket, the life cycle bucket or the journey bucket, basically means that now I'm in this campaign, I'm in this life cycle flow for the user. This flow was started by a very specific event, by a very specific flight search. And I want to refer to that particular search and fetch data from that, from that behavior, right? So we're gonna use this for now. Let's say we want to figure out how many tickets are left. Now, assuming this event has been passed by you uh, to us in real time, flight searched, what you would also do is along with the occurrence of this event, you would also attach a fair amount of metadata related to that event. So information about the event. So what was the flight search about? What was the departure city, the arrival city, the time, um, the type of the class, whether a coupon was applied, any uh, business information which is of interest to you, you would basically try to capture the essence of that in the actions that you are capturing as events. So flight search being an event that you're capturing, you would attach these uh, attributes and more, whatever makes sense to your business. So here, for example, we want to pick how many tickets are left, right? So if that's what we wanted to do, assuming we've passed that data along to WebEngage, only X amount of tickets left. Let's say we just point and click on that attribute. Again, it's just point and click. Once you've passed the data to us, the consumption is fairly simple. It's point and click with the human. And voila, if you notice the the preview it shows you only three tickets left for the sample user that we are previewing it for now think about this for a moment this this is a tremendous amount of power at your fingertips right any behavioral data which is happening in real time is being captured and is available to you in a point and click approach to just use uh, for extremely high touch personalized messages so why stop there right that's the title so john only three tickets are left let's say now we want to uh, complement this with book your uh, okay let's say book your let's say we wanted to uh, 
uh, departure to arrival. So I refer to the same event again, right? The one that he had searched for, the flight searched for, and I would say, okay, let's say I want to do departure city. So book your Frankfurt to the arrival city, Hamburg flight for uh, whichever was the date that the user basically wanted to travel on. And that's it. It's just point and click. So uh, the sense is that the behavior has been captured, the associated data that you'd like to use has been captured, and from there on, it's just this simple. And uh, that's a decent message, I believe. Let's just try and see if we can get the image to be a little more pertinent. Let's say we said um, we want to show the image of the destination that the guy is traveling to, or maybe we want to show the image of the airline or the or the, the class that he wanted to book for. Right. So, OK, so assuming he wanted to book like a Lufthansa flight, uh, uh, that data was captured in the event. Such visualizations can also be personalized to the system. So that's where we've reached now. This is the next level. This is level two of personalization where you don't just personalize on the basis of user profile data. You also use their behavioral attributes in real time to personalize and contextualize as much as possible. Right. Awesome. And by the way, as I mentioned, this ability is channel agnostic. So I'm showing you a sample push notification, but the same level of personalization, the same human is available to you in all channels that are available in that image. Okay. So that's a decent bit. Just to recap where we are so far, uh, we've, we've made friends with the human. We know he's the one we look to to personalize. Uh, we know that we've got a lot of user profile attributes available for personalization. We know we have got a lot of behavioral data that we can personalize on the basis of the latest event or, or a specific event in a life cycle. And the prerequisite to doing this is basically passing the data during integration to us in real time using our SDKs and APIs or batch uploads. Right? Awesome. So, all of this was personalization on the basis of data that you've captured inside the WebEngage ecosystem or you've helped WebEngage capture this data one way or another. What we also offer as the next step of personalization is personalizing your campaigns in real time on the basis of data that we don't even have stored, right? So personalizing using external data which basically means that if you've got any data in your CRM, your data warehouse, an LMS or a recommendation engine or any other third party data source that you want to pull uh, into WebEngage just in time before you're about to dispatch a campaign, that can also be done. It's done using API driven personalization. I'll be showing you that shortly. And in this section, I'll also cover how you would use some complicated data structure that comes back to you using these API calls that you might want to use in your messages. So for example, lists of products or conditional data blocks, and those would be covered in this section as well. Okay. So let's just continue on the use case that we were previously building on. Uh, so we ran a campaign for abandoners and because we took so much personal attention to them, let's say a lot of them converted. And once they booked the flight, because we were more greedy as, as as brands, we wanted to try and upsell or cross-sell uh, hotel bookings to them, right? So ideally, what we want to do here is we still want to continue to stay as relevant as possible. We still want to resonate. It's never going to be batch and blast. So when the guy books a flight, ideally, if he's not already booked a hotel as well, and maybe if he's not traveling back to his home uh, uh, city, we want to basically try and recommend hotels to him for his stay. And this hotel recommendation bit is possibly data that we don't uh, natively have in WebEngage, but we're going to try and fetch it from a third party system in real time. So the outcome that you want to get to is uh, something like this, where we again speak contextual language. So if John booked a ticket to Hamburg, we uh, recommend him uh, hotels which are relevant to that particular area. Now, the magic is in the second step where we fetch hotel recommendations using our API 
uh, personalization capabilities. Basically, conceptually, what happens is when the user is in that stage of the journey, Web Engage would contact your uh, REST API enabled uh, third party data store, could be a recommendation engine, could be anything. But we basically talk to a third party data store over typical REST APIs. If the data store needs any context from us, like for example, here we want uh, hotel recommendations for the destination that the user is going to. So destination is something that we would have to convey to the third party data store before we get the appropriate response. So that conveyance, that context passing can be enabled using the personalization engine as well. Again, the human is gonna to come to your rescue, wait and watch. And once we do that, once you pass that context along, we would get, we would expect a JSON response from that third party data store and the inner structure of the JSON uh, is not, uh, it's extremely flexible. You can pass whatever you want as response, so long as it is valid JSON. And that data can then be parsed and looped over and used inside of any campaign that you want to create. Let's actually look at that. If this is the email that you want to send, um, this is what it would be loosely under the hood where uh, a lot of the uh, personalized content would be fetched using the API recommendations that they're going to be pulling. So let's actually uh, go back to demo mode and see how we will get to this, right? Okay. Good. Right. Okay. So, so this is the same uh, life cycle that we are continuing with. So once we uh, actually sent the push notification, we waited for them to complete the transaction. And in this case, we are handling the scenario where the user actually ended up booking uh, the ticket, right? We completed the checkout. So the flight was booked. And then uh, maybe two days before the departure date, uh, we want to send in this list of recommendations. Now, mind you, uh, this whole workflow that we are creating, when I said two days before departure date, that is also extreme amount of personalization or other contextualization capability that you're getting here. So the concept is the same. Instead of uh, using this, uh, this, this capability for content personalization, we're using this for contextual uh, personalization. So here you could also do things like if this is a business trip, uh, we basically uh, maybe want to send this a day in advance. If this is a holiday booking that the guy is doing, which could be deduced from the, uh, the departure and arrival dates, uh, departure and return dates rather. So if it's like a seven day window, maybe we assume that it's a leisure trip or a holiday and we want to reach out to them for a booking. We want to recommend that seven days in advance. So such kinds of personalization is also uh, available to you, uh, but maybe that's best left for another time. Let's get back to the content personalization that we were doing, right? So just before we want to send them an email, let's say we want to send them a hotel recommendations email at this opportune moment, just before we send the email, we want to talk to this third party recommendation engine and we want to fetch a list of recommendations. So let's see how we would do that. Assuming this is like a dummy uh, recommendation engine that we've set up for the demo, which is reachable at this particular URL, we're hitting this uh, recommendation engine. We're making a get request to that recommendation engine. And if you notice here, what we did was we again looked to the human and we reached or we picked the booking event that happened, right? Instead of the search event right now, we are interested in the actual booking event that happened. And from within the booking event, we said, okay, whatever is the arrival city, that is the data that I need to send to my third party data store so that it can return me the relevant recommendations uh, list. So that is personalization as well. That's personalization in a very different form, but it's extreme uh, personalization, which is uh, very, very handy. So this request that you're making, if, if there's authorization required, all of that can also be taken care of. Uh, this is basically a simple uh, HTTP uh, REST API get request that you're curating and you've got complete flexibility here. So just to test whether this actually works or not, uh, if you're gonna hit this recommendation engine uh, in, in real world, in real time, let's say that the user actually is gonna go to Hamburg Let's try and test if the actual data comes back to us. 
and yes it does so here is the kind of response that we are getting back right it's uh, basically a list of hotel recommendations it's it's a valid json it's an array of uh, hotel objects and they contain a lot of metadata about the hotel that we might want to use in a subsequent message we'll get how we can use that probably just test it for a few other scenarios does it work for other places as well yes it does okay awesome so assuming that this is going to work let's see how we can actually use this api response uh, in real time in the subsequent campaigns that are going to go so let's open up the email now so in the for the in the interest of time i basically put in the shell structure of the markup that you would need to put uh, for like a responsive and friendly uh, email uh, so ignoring all of that let's look at the personalization capabilities that we have used so uh, let's start with the subject right because why not so here there's this weird uh, code structure that comes about which says if uh, there is such a thing as an arrival city if i have that data then i use it in the subject line i say still searching for hotels in that very same arrival city now the way that this subject was curated is again basically you point click select and personalize right so still looking for hotels if, if that arrival city data is not there we generalize it uh, for that fallback scenario this can actually be done in a couple of ways. Here's one way of doing it. Now, if you notice in the human, the human this time has a little bit more to offer us. If you notice, there's a call and API option available as well. So we, we included an API uh, step and basically the data that comes back or is expected back from that is also made available to us in a point and click manner. So again, if you wanted to use hotel data, we would be doing this point click personalized uh, technique and we would be how we would use the inner data which is contained inside of those objects let me quickly show you that so there's a couple of examples that i'd like to highlight here in the content of the email itself so uh, the link that you're curating somewhere along the line in the email there's a link that takes you to a landing page of all hotels in the corresponding destination so if you notice that this link is also hyper personalized uh, you're actually picking that arrival city data and transforming it in in some manner you're picking that data converting it into lowercase replacing any spaces by hyphens so you're basically doing a little bit of uh, uh, programming uh, but relatively simply in order to create like a url friendly version of the data that you've captured and all of this capability that you're seeing right this this codability the one that you saw above as well, the if else block that you saw, or this, this transformation that you're seeing, or the loop that you're about to see down below, all of that is courtesy a templating engine that we use. Uh, the templating engine is called Nunjux, and it's, a, it's an extremely capable templating engine, and you can obviously go through the documentation uh, of, uh, of the engine itself uh, to understand what, what codability is available to you, Typically, you would end up using uh, if blocks and loops in order to print out lists of items, or uh, maybe you would want to use uh, uh, things that allow you to do fallbacks. Sometimes you might want to transform your data just like we were doing right now, converting it into lowercase and uh, replacing um, spaces by hyphens and so on and so forth. So all of that capability is available to you uh, inside of this email uh, designer. And just to go over the actual looping itself. So this is again some data block that you want to conditionally include, right? So if my API responded with a certain data point, in this case, the amount of balance that I have in my wallet, if that data is available, I would possibly include another content block which would resonate with that user. If it isn't available, this data block will basically be ignored. So those kind of abilities. And finally, we get to the looping capability where in the list of hotels that we get back, we basically loop over that list 
we ensure that we don't go more than seven. We don't want to recommend more than seven or an arbitrary number of uh, uh, hotel recommendations. And we basically list out a little bit of metadata that came back from that API response. So we are looping over the, the hotel list that we got. And for every item, for every hotel, we are saying, I want to print out the hotel name in this manner. I want to use the hotel URL in this manner and so on and so forth. So what, what visual structure you create is completely up to you. All of that is also personalizable using such dynamic code constructs, which is courtesy the Nunjux templating engine. So that is basically how you would use the data that comes back from your API. And this is also how you would use any complicated data or any uh, sort of list type of data or conditional data that might come back from your API response. Great. So those are the advanced API driven personalization capabilities. And um, whatever we've conveyed to you so far, whatever we've uh, demonstrated is actually not fluff that we've pulled out of our, which we've pulled out of thin air. This is actually validated stuff which, which has run in the real world and has done well. So GoIBibo is uh, one of our customers uh, in the OTA space. And uh, they actually did something very similar. So the marketing team there wanted to engage with these uh, abandoners in a very personalized manner. And, and the intention was, of course, to retain them and eventually also try and uh, upsell and so on. So they created a journey of this manner, a workflow of this manner. Uh, extremely, very, very similar to what uh, we created. Just a few more uh, um, scenarios that they've handled in case there's no email and they do something else. If, if a campaign has already gone, they don't want to over communicate, so they prevent that. So all of that aside, this is basically what we demonstrated uh, previously. And the outcome or a sample uh, the content, a rich personalized content that they could create was of this nature, where the search context was in the subject, any CRM related data was being used uh, in the body of the email, uh, multiple API responses were being used in order to further personalize and conditional data blocks and lists of data were being fed in uh, to basically make the structure and the content extremely rich and one that would resonate and want to evoke action, right? The results were of course favorable. Uh, they actually tested it with multiple variants uh, in the subject lines and in the body of the, the content itself. And you'll notice that the one at the top and the bottom, the ones with the most uh, context and the ones which were extremely easy on the eye uh, basically gave them the best open rates and click-throughs and conversion rates. So this testability is actually also packaged in the product. We'll probably hold another webinar on that subject. So that was basically uh, all we had to share in terms of uh, the how to uh, personalize and that being validated with a real-world case study as well. That case study is available online on monk.webengage.com. You'll actually be able to read through much more details about it. Uh, we have got an explainer video on our YouTube channel on this subject. Uh, there's uh, a little more uh, content that we'll share with you. So after this webinar is done, we'll be uh, sharing these resources with you. Um, but basically, this is it. This is all that we wanted to convey. And I think I'll hand it back to Avantika now. All right, thank you, Samir. Let's start with the Q&A session. We'll give you a minute to type in your questions and we'll attend to them shortly. All right, guys, we'll start addressing the questions now. Uh, thank you, guys. You have been sending us a plethora of questions. And if you're not able to address any of yours, we'll reach out to you personally. So, Samit, uh, let's start. Uh, Sam wants to know, uh, does Web WebEngage perform a reverse IP lookup? Okay. Uh, thank you, Sam, for that question. Uh, 
So a web engage does build anonymous user profiles. Uh, your users don't have to be logged in uh, in order to be profiled by web engage. There is session data that we capture including IP, but today we've not gone as far as to reverse IP lookup and try to uh, basically realize where or which account or which company the customers may belong. So if you're coming from the account-based marketing world, I would say today we don't do a reverse IP lookup. Maybe this is something that we look into in the future. But yes, the IP information is captured at the very least. I hope that answers your question, Sam. Uh, Vishwambar wants to know, can personalization be done at IP level? Specific messages to show to users from certain IP list? Thank you, Vishwambar, for that question. A lot of IP related questions I see. Uh, that's all right. So can personalization be done at an IP level? Uh, yes. Uh, so the, the thing that you're trying to do is you want to send a specific set of messages to uh, people from different geographies or different IP uh, ranges, I believe. And that is possible. Uh, the means to do that is segmentation. Uh, so I think that's a topic that's uh, a, a whole webinar topic in itself. But yes, you are able to segment your users on the basis of a plethora of uh, criteria, including IP ranges, and you can target uh, specific messages to specific uh, IP sets. Savio wants to know, conditional branching is in Nunjek, not in your Flow Painter? Conditional branching in Nunjek, not in your Flow Painter. Okay. If I understand the question correctly, uh, you're saying Nunjek has a capability to do uh, conditional branching. Uh, whether that is a part of our, our journey or our uh, visual workflow builder or not, or not is is what you're asking. So any capability that you've got in Nunjax is available to you for use for content personalization. So whenever you're typing any message, whether it be the email body or uh, the subject or a push notification, button label, wherever, you can use Nunjax templating and all the constructs that it offers. So if else is or for loops or anything else. But the purpose there is to branch and conditionally personalize the data block that would go in that space and not necessarily the workflow itself. It would basically be used to personalize the content of the campaign. Um, okay, so Viraj wants to know uh, how this works for web notification or personalization on websites. So, uh, thanks Viraj. Viraj, the best part about uh, this personalization engine that we built is that it's an engine. We've not tied it to a channel channel per se. We've built it to stand on its own feet and it's available across all the means of engagement that you've got. So the human is pretty much your friend across web notifications and your website and everywhere else. Um, okay, Rahul Datta wants to know, can we use image apart from the logo in web push? Okay, uh, so yes, when you send a web push, uh, you are able to customize the the smaller image that gets attached to that particular web push that is going. Um, okay, if you're talking about the the larger, richer web push notifications, the way you can do them in mobile in the mobile push world, uh, where you can actually embed a larger image below the message. That capability is available in the web push technology. It's just not cross browser compliant, which is why we don't have it in our suite yet. But yes, that is something which is on the roadmap and should should come out to you shortly. Okay, another question uh, from Vishwambar. Can we do personalization on the basis of user journey flow? If users have, if a user has re reached a page from page A, then page B, can I personalize message on page C depending on the content viewed on A and B? <laughs> Good one, Vishwambar. And the answer is absolutely. You seem to be a part of the user. We should talk offline. Uh, but yes, any behavior that the user is expressing 
if you want to use that to personalize or target subsequently, you have the capability to do it. For example, here you're saying that, can I show a personalized message on page C, depending on the content viewed on page A and B. So the prerequisite is that viewing the content, or viewing a certain section is a behavior that you are interested in. That is something that you'll have to capture. So when the user views page A and page B or a certain section of it, you would trigger an event. You would capture some metadata around that event. And subsequently, when the guy reaches page C, you will have the latest occurrences of the ones that he did on page A and B, and you would be able to personalize your content on the decision. Uh, Vishwamar, if you have any other question, you can please feel free to connect with us offline, and we'll be more than happy to get on call with you. Okay. Uh, Chanchal wants to know, uh, I'm trying to hyper-personalize notifications based on people's activity, and we are having a hard time to do that. I think we need architecture level help to provide data to WebEngage. Chanchal, we are more than happy to help you on this. Uh, please connect with us uh, after the webinar and we'll be happy to take up your case. So as you've seen, uh, the personalization engine, the human basically makes it as easy for you as it is to point and click and that's it. So the whole heavy lifting uh, has to be done at the time of integration and making sure that the right uh, data is being passed, the, the ones that you anticipate using. And our team can certainly help you in that scenario. Another question from Savio, does the platform manage landing pages from uh, these campaigns? Uh, we don't have the capability to uh, build landing pages uh, yet, um, Savio, you will be able to link to uh, any of the landing pages that you want, but yeah, uh, to answer your question straight, our suite as on date does not allow you to build landing pages. Okay, guys, we've got a a ton of other questions, uh, too many to handle. So I think we're going to reach out to you uh, individually to address all of those. Uh, let's just pick a last one. Give us a moment, sir. Oh, we've got a very interesting question here uh, by Rohan Agarwal. So he's talking in the context of the example that we gave. And Rohan, kudos to you to uh, sort of identify the shortcoming in that example. For the interest of everybody's benefit, I'll read that out. If the seats left data, so if you remember, we use this only three tickets available, right? So if that data is fetched in real time through an API or is it coming to an event? That's the question that one is asking because we showed you that uh, it came from an event. Uh, the inventory could change, right? If we actually used the data from an event that happened in the past, other bookings would have happened and the inventory would eventually change. So Rohan has actually answered the question in his own, uh, in the question itself. So he said, do you do it through an event or you do it through an API? So the recommended way or the preferred way, the most optimum, the most real way is to do it using an API. If that is too cumbersome for you to set up, uh, so the API would basically be an endpoint where we would ping you with say the flight number or, uh, or the, uh, um, the departure arrival combination and you would respond with uh, JSON data that would contain three or two or how many ever seats were left just before sending the email. So that would be extremely optimal. I give it to you, but if that is not possible, uh, still in case that is uh, too cumbersome uh, setup for you to do, you could still at least get to the extent of embedding that data in events and uh, contextualizing the message in order to try and grab attention and drive action. But yes, the correct way to do it is the way that you suggest through APIs. So guys, I think that's uh, a lot of questions that we still are pending. We are gonna reach out to you individually uh, back to you, Antika. Thank you, Sameer. Thank you so much for the presentation. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. You guys have been great. Uh, please don't forget to take out a moment to complete our survey, which we'll be sending out along with the email. And we'll be uh, sending you the recording, some of the uh, other resources on personalization we have, and also answering your queries. All right. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.